So the first thing you want to be doing is uh, working in a new app that you may have never seen before called Procreate. If you've never seen it before, what you can do is just pull down with your finger anywhere on the main screen. Uh, another little tip there, sometimes I find it easier to work with my, uh, my keyboard pulled apart. So if you find it easier, you can actually just put both thumbs on your keyboard and pull it apart and you'll see that it, uh, it separates them. I find that just a little bit easier to kind of write with. So I'm just going to start typing in Procreate. You're going to see it pops up. It's got like a little rainbow drop. Click on that. And if I was working in this already, it will pull up the last thing I was working in. So obviously, this one isn't mine. I'm just going to leave it alone. Okay. So uh, it'll show all of the assignments before, and generally they'll say untitled artwork, etc. So a good kind of practice is to put your name on it. That way, we'll know um, the other people in the other classes won't touch your work. Um, it's always a good practice to do that. So uh, whenever you're wanting to make a new document, you're going to want to hit this little plus. And we're actually going to make a custom document, but generally what you want to work with is the one with the most layers. And you can see the layers there on the right. It says 26 layers. That, that obviously will give us the most layers possible, right? So 26 layers. Hi. How's it going? Awesome. He is. Right He's just right through the doors to the left. Like, that yeah, yeah, you're in the right place. <laughs> okay. So take a look. Uh, what we're going to do is click on the custom. So we're going to make a custom size. Um, it's always in pixels there, which is fine. Uh, again, you don't need to do this. Um, actually, you know what? For this, it'll work if I just hit the 1080, which has the 26 layers. And what you can do is you can rotate it. What I did, did to rotate that is just grab it with two fingers and rotate it. So I can rotate it any which way I want. And I can resize it. I can zoom in with two fingers. I can zoom out with two fingers. And I'm happy with it just like that, right? I'm actually just going to put the lights here just so we can see it a little bit better. Um, remember how we talked about all of our images being vertical. So this is in a portrait mode where it was in landscape mode before. So this is landscape, this is portrait. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to the point where I see everything. So I'm going to kind of zoom out so I can see the whole thing. That way I kind of get a sense of where my lines are. Uh, of course, I'm sure you've never seen Procreate before. This should be a new app for a lot of you. So I'll show you a few of the little basics. Um, on the right hand side, right there is your colors. So if you're going to be doing some drawing, you can select different colors um, just by moving that around. There's also custom colors in the bottom here. Um, you can always click, if you've seen the top here, you can kind of click on different things. If you know, these are called hex codes. Colors, certain colors have certain codes that you can get. Uh, if you want a very specific color, we'll talk about that a little bit later. For this, we don't really need any specific color, so I'm just going to set that to a blue. If I want that to go away, all I do would be click on that dot again, and that'll bring it up or put it back. The second one here is my Layers tabs. Those Layers tabs become extremely important in my alphabet photography assignment because I'm going to have to eventually merge some of those together. So you can see there that there's a Layer 1, there's a Background layer, um, Essentially, we're going to have many layers. And remember when we clicked on that size, it said 26 layers. So how many letters are there in the alphabet? 26. So if we have a background layer already, and if we don't have anything on the background layer, that means we don't actually have enough layers for all the different images. So I'm going to show you a trick about how we delete layers and how we add layers together. So for example, I'm going to delete this layer 1. And all I'm going to do is just swipe to the left, it's kind of like an Apple thing. If you want to delete like email, same thing. I'm just going to hit clear. You can see there that we can copy or duplicate or select it. But for this, I'm just going to hit clear. And it's going to delete everything on that layer. Okay. Uh, if we need to make a new layer, we can hit plus. I'll show you why that could be important later. I'm just going to hit delete. Then the next one over, the next tool is the eraser tool. And if I click on it, it will select it. But then it will also give me, it will say like all these brushes. And so if I wanted to, for example, I'll, I'll show you. So um, I'm just going to drag and drop this color. And that will make it all one size or one color. Say if I want to grab a soft edge brush and erase. 
you can see it's erasing and it's got a soft edge brush. I can change the size of that brush over here. So if I want it really small, it's this slider. If I want it really big, it's over here. So that's this slider. And then we have something called opacity on the right hand side. So opacity means how see-through it is. So if I just want to take a very little amount, I would, I would go down to the bottom and make this really big. And see there how it's not really taking all of the blue away, just some of it. But if I wanted to erase like 100%, I would just turn that all the way up, right? And so of course that has kind of, I call that like a spray paint brush. Um, if I wanted like a hard edge brush, I would just go down here to the bottom, hard edge, test the size, okay, maybe that's not big enough. I want it bigger, perfect. And I can start doing some erasing. Let's just say we made a mistake, how do we go back? Underneath, you'll see there's a little arrow that says backwards, right there. It'll undo your steps. Okay, you only have a limited amount of undos. So you can't, like, before you click a thousand times, just make sure that it's what you want to do. And again, if you didn't see before that little trick of me coloring the entire background, I just selected my color, I clicked on it, and I just dragged it to my page, and it filled it in for me. So there we go. Um, there's uh, this tool, my brush tool. Um, there's also different types of brushes. There's, because this is a very kind of like fancy drawing app, you'll see a lot of different tools kind of like that, um, as well as the brushes, soft edge, right now it's on a hard edge brush, sketching, use oil pastel, and you can see it does kind of like a, a really artistic -y more of a, an art background. For us, we don't really need to know the art history and, and how to use it for that purpose because we're not going to be necessarily using it to draw. We're going to use this to kind of put our background together. So, um, and some of these over here, what I would say, some of the adjustments, none of these are really important for us right now except for the little uh, gear, the little wrench, sorry. Um, insert is a good one. Uh, for example, we're going to import our images. So once we have our template down, we're going to import each of our letters. And that's how we can do that. Clicking the wrench, clicking import, then import image. Uh, the next one, canvas, that's where we can flip it or rotate it. But I showed you how to do that automatically. When we're done with it and we want to share it, what we're going to do is export the artwork. There's also an area where we can export a video. And it actually exports a video of the entire process, but kind of like a time lapse. So it, it's kind of like almost a stop motion animation of us doing it. Um, we have some devices we can use. We won't really use that. Uh, the preferences, we won't really use that as well. So uh, for our purposes, what we want to do is always be mindful of our layers. What I'm going to do is I'm going to delete or clear that layer. And I'm going to go onto my background layer. And I'm going to select kind of just a black. Or sorry, I'm going to leave it white. Um, what I can do is, on my layer one, what I, I'm going to basically write an outline of all of our layers. So, what actually ends up working out quite well for us is, again, I'm just going to go back to the airbrush, I'm going to grab a hard brush, and it's kind of on a dark setting. Again, I don't need it that big, 100% opacity. Always make sure you know what layer you're on. And from doing this previously, I know that four vertical columns work really well. So I'm going to just break this up, right, draw a line right down the middle. That's a little bit big. I want it just a little bit smaller. Yeah. Uh, you draw the line? OK, so at the top of the screen, I have the brush clipped. And then I have the hard brush selected. So you can just click on the brush, then I have the airbrush, then the hard brush, and I have a color selected, right? So not super important, we can follow that a little bit later. I'm just going to show you kind of the overview of what I'm going to do. And of course my line isn't extremely straight. Another way to do that, you can do that. I'm, I'm just going to show you the easiest way. Yeah, that one was really bad. And this one was really bad too. Okay, so it's hard for me to do those straight lines. But if you do the math on the alphabet, 26 layers, uh, we're going to have, if we have four columns, what does it work out to for rows? 
how many rows do we need to fit the alphabet? Anybody know? What if you did seven? Seven times four is what? 28, which would be the closest we can get in this vertical space. So what I'll do is one, two, Six, seven. Okay, so if we put in our alphabet, we will realize that we have a couple extra squares. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put the alphabet in, and that's that's going to make it very easy to follow. And I'm just pinching out with my fingers, kind of to zoom in. And I'm just going to type in the alphabet. Or sorry, right here. A, B, C, D, F, G, and then when I want to move, I'm just going to grab it with two fingers, K, L, N, N, Okay, and then again, these ones are open, so I'm just going to kind of fill it in. I'm going to show you what to do with those later. But what this is, is a, it's a really good grid for us to use. So that was all on layer one. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on it and rename. I'm just going to type grid. Perfect. So if, for example, we have too many layers and we need to combine some layers, all you would do is just pinch them together. So I'm, for this purpose, I'm just going to show you. Uh, if I wanted to move my layer two onto my grid, all I would do is pinch them together and see they become one. So once I have my A, B, C, and D together, I can maybe pinch those together to make it work. Uh, but it's generally not a good idea to do that until you have them organized a little bit better. So let's start getting some of our pictures in here. Uh, in order to do that, what I want to do is hit um, the little wrench, then insert, import image, and then you're going to say, well, where do you want to pick it from? And generally, it's going to be photos, because it should be on your, your device here. And I'm going to click on camera roll. And these just have pictures that were saved on my device, and it was just pictures from previous classes, etc. Uh, so if you've taken your pictures on your iPad, they should be in there. So I'm going to just... Uh, for the purpose of this, I'm just going to grab one and pretend it's a letter. Uh, let's just say this one. What it's going to do, it's going to import that image, and it's going to kind of just drop it down. And remember, all of our pictures were taken vertically, um, so I'm just going to pretend that that image is going to be a K, right? So you can kind of see here, uh, it gives all these little white, sorry, uh, dark circles. So I'm just going to kind of make it what I think is the correct size for now and put it over the right spot. And again, that should be a K, not the Lego picture. But you can kind of get a sense of how it's going to work. And on my layers, I'm going to click on my layer and rename it K. That becomes very important in your organizational structure, right? And so we're going to do the same thing for all our letters. I'm going to go to the gear. I'm going to hit insert, import image. Photos, camera roll, um, awesome. Say this is our next picture. And again, it should be taken vertical. Let's say we had to flip our image though, because some of our images can be flipped. All I would do is click on the right side and flip it over like that. Or you can also rotate it by, I put two fingers down and kind of spin it, just like we did in the first place. Uh, but with that, it makes it a little bit hard to line it up properly. I'm just going to click on that again. Sometimes what you have to do is click on it and hit um, Select Contents. And that will allow us to play just that. Sort of. and I, I can undo. I was actually painting on it, which was what I call it. There we go. So I can just click on do, make it roughly the same size, and you want them all to fit together really nicely. Okay, so playing with it like that, etc. 
So we're going to repeat that process until we have the entire thing done. Uh, but remember, we're gonna, going to be left with um, a big spot at the bottom right hand side as well. So again, after I've imported it, I'm going to rename it, whatever letter it was, etc. There we go. And so when, maybe when I have that line done and I know it's good, I can just pinch those two together. And there we go. That way, it, those now become one image. Oops. And uh, yeah, let's say we need to move it around. We can just click on the little arrow. And if we need to resize it, uh, it's easy to resize up and down, but not side to side. So like, I would say start off with whatever rows you have. If you have A, B, C, and D, put those together and then merge those layers. That way we can always make them fit vertically. Um, depending on what size we have later on. So that's essentially absolutely everything you need to know and do for the alphabet photography assignment. Of course, you're going to continue fitting in all your images and make it work. Um, and then the last process, let's pretend we're absolutely done. Say this is finished, finalized, we want to put it up on our blog. Click on the year, sorry, the wrench. Um, and we would go to share, export artwork. And it has a whole bunch of different uh, versions. We're always just going to hit JPEG because that's the easiest way to get it up on the blog. It's just a JPEG image. And it'll say, okay, well, where do you want to put it? And we're actually going to just say, save image. Save image. And there we go. And it's actually already going to be in there. The other, the other cool feature is export video, which I really love. So it's going to export this video, and it's going to save it to our camera roll. I'm going to show you exactly what it looks like. So it's going to show you everything we've done here. Oops. Too quickly. So it'll pop up saying, where do you want to put it? I'm going to save the video. And now let's take a look at uh, those that I have finished. So it'll be in my photos. There we go. Awesome. Well, there is my uh, picture anyway. I can always rotate it later on as well. Uh, but, uh, yeah. So that's kind of the process so far uh, before we put it up on our blog. And uh, yeah, so I will put this video up.